silent and noise making devices, please. And that also applies to children. Now, we're running behind, so we're going to move quick, fast, in a hurry, but we're going to have a great contest, and we're going to come out with the world's greatest speakers. Yes, sir. Without further ado, I want to bring the South Division Governor up so we can get this meeting started. This meeting is officially open. South
now ready to hear from our table topics contestants. There will be one minute of silence in between each contestant. And timekeepers, uh, sitting in the front, when I advise you, please do signal me when the green light with one minute is up. And after all the contestants have spoken, the judges, everyone will be given time to uh, complete their ballot. Contestant number one, Sandra Washington. Sandra Washington, Shakespeare once said, to be or not to be, that is the question. How do you interpret this statement? And I'll repeat that one. Shakespeare once said, to be or not to be, that is the question. How do you interpret this statement? Sandra Washington. Well, I believe to be 
now. Not necessarily two, three, four, five days from now. But to be present. And how to be present. To be present in love. To be present in compassion. To be present not just for yourself. To be present for those who are around you. To be or not to be to me, once born, I am to be how I choose to be is really what the question is. My person, I choose to be here for others. I choose to be here as a service for those who may not know what to do or may not have the voice to do it. That is mine to be. And each one of us has to ask that question of ourselves. So to you, what does to be or not to be mean to you? Contestant number three, Wallace Larson. Shakespeare once said, to be or not to be, that is the question. How do you interpret this statement? Shakespeare once said, to be or not to be, that is the question. How do you interpret this statement? Wallace Larson. Fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, to be or not to be, and how do I interpret that statement? I think I'm a human being, so I'm going to be a bee. I'm not going to be a doing and be defined by what I do, but who I am. I want to be able to get up in the morning and look in the mirror. But what does that mean? Because it's often heard you need to walk the talk. So you're doing things that actually define yourself. I think that's why many of us are here. It's a tough topic. Because we can do many things. But it's who I am at the core. A father, a husband. Those are the things of being. 
What I do with my spouse, what I do changing a diaper on my toddler, those are doing things. Being and doing. I want to be defined as a good person, so I work that way. I try to live with integrity, looking at the mirror each day, knowing there's things that I can do in my spiritual life, in my physical life, in my emotional life that improve me. Thank you very much. Elizabeth Stevenson. Shakespeare once said, to be or not to be, that is the question. How do you interpret this statement? Shakespeare once said, to be or not to be, that is the question. How do you interpret this statement? Elizabeth Stevenson.
Contestant number five, Michael Gugis. Shakespeare once said, to be or not to be, that is the question. How do you interpret this statement? Shakespeare once said, to be or not to be, that is the question. How do you interpret this statement? Michael Gugis. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and distinguished guests, to be or not to be? I think that is a question that we all must at some point or, or another consider. Who do you want to become? Now I know that before I started Toastmasters, I would go to business meetings and I'd explain something, but I was thinking a little too much and before I know it, these glazed over eyes would go, I need a Toastmasters. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a wonderful experience. In fact, I was a member of a charter club. I even named our club. We called ourselves the All-State Smooth Talkers. <laughs> the benefits were many from Toastmasters. And the biggest thing that I gained from it all was confidence. It opened up many avenues of things that I never would have considered before. I find that there are, I have so many new skills due to the confidence from public speaking I've got too many jobs. I'm a salesperson, something I never considered before. I am also public notary, looking to teach high school, things I never would have considered in the past. I have too many jobs. Some people accuse me of being Jamaican. <laughs> but I think that with Toastmasters, and particularly with table topics. When you have the confidence to speak to anyone at any time about anything, you will go far and become the person you are truly meant to be. Madam Toastmaster. Number six, Charles Brooks. Shakespeare once said, to be or not to be, that is the question. How do you interpret this statement? Shakespeare once said, to be or not to be, that is the question. How do you interpret this statement? Charles Brooks. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and welcome guests. To be or not to be, that is always the question. To be what? Is what everyone asks themselves as they prepare for life. What will I be? And what do I have to do to get to that point? 
some of us get derailed because we're not persistent enough. But persistence is the key to getting to anywhere you want to be. There will always be obstacles in the road. Always. But you can only obtain persistence if you go through or around or over those obstacles. Because obstacles teach you what you need to know. What do I need to do? Some people believe in hope. I know I do. And some people don't. They give up. If you believe in hope, if you believe in persistence, if you believe that you can, then you will. Because you see, if you think you can or think you can't, you're right. That's what Henry Ford said. My mother said, boy, take the tea out of can, ain't no can in my house. <laughs> and she also said something else. She said, you know something else? They whooped up can't tell they could. You see, to be or not to be is right here, right between your ears. Whatever you want to be, you persevere until you get there. And if you do that, then and only then can you be. Contestant number seven, Janice Fortman. Shakespeare once said, to be or not to be, that is the question. How do you interpret the statement? Shakespeare once said, to be or not to be, that is the question. How do you interpret this statement? Janice Fortman. I want to be the best mom, I want to be the best wife, 
especially since I've only been a wife now for almost two years. <laughs> I want to be the best Toastmaster I can. To be or not to be, I'm going to be Madam Toastmaster. <laughs>
able to get us excited and pumped about our upcoming conference, Michelle. <laughs>